One of the most common questions that I get around fertility is what diet should I do if I'm trying to get pregnant? Or what should I be eating if I'm trying to get pregnant? Well, that's really not such an easy question to ask. And the reality is, is it's very unique for each one of you based on your history, diagnosis, labs, and so forth. But in this video, I'm going to summarize the five best types of foods which I'm gonna start with right here, to help you on that path to deciding what's the best diet and foods that you should be eating to get pregnant. Before I do that, I do wanna give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this week's video, the Fertile Mind app. Just for my viewers, that's right, all of you, they don't do this for anybody else. The Fertile Mind app is giving away a 30-day free trial for all of you. All you have to do is use the link and the code in the description below. It's an amazing app to help you get your mind in the right place while you're on this fertility journey. Check it out with the link in the description. Hi, my name is Dr. Mark Sklar, also known as the Fertility Expert. And I've been working with couples through my online coaching programs and right here in San Diego in my clinic for over 19 years, actually close to 20 years. Okay, so as you can see, I'm prepared to talk about food and diet and what we put into our bodies and why it's so important when we talk about fertility. The first thing I wanna highlight is, you know, what should our plate look like when we are compiling a meal for ourselves? And this is an important thing that we need to recognize, okay? So often what we find is that we put a lot of bread or pasta or rice or carbs on our plate. And I'm not here to say that carbs are bad. I'm here to start to explain which carbs you should be focusing on and which ones are better for you and how much of those things are appropriate for you. So when I look at this plate and I think about a meal, the first things that come to mind are, how am I gonna fill this plate with protein? How am I gonna fill this plate with fat? And how am I gonna fill this plate with carbs and preferably those carbs coming from vegetables. And that's what I want you to start to think about as well as you are starting to compile your meals and start to comprehend and understand how you compose a meal for yourself that's gonna be balanced, healthy, nourishing, and sustaining in a day. So as I'm gonna to start to dive into these basics, the one thing I do wanna to touch on first is that if you've been trying for more than six months and you've been unsuccessful on your attempts, you might need a more personalized plan that goes beyond just some of the basics that come around that we're discussing today around nutrition and diet and what food you should be eating. You really might need a more comprehensive, integrative and combination approach to bring everything together to get you the results that you're looking for. And that's exactly what I'm gonna be talking about in my upcoming training that I would love for you to join me on. It's a free training and it's gonna be packed with so much useful and important information to help you on your fertility journey. But you do need to register for it to join me at it, and you can use the link in the description below to register and join me for that training. I hope to see you there. Now, let's dive a little bit deeper into all of this. So before I get into some of these main details and components of a meal, I do wanna highlight, and you've heard me say this before, that quality is everything. The quality of the food that we consume is probably one of the most important decisions that you make when you are making your choices when it comes to food. And so the first thing that we need to understand when it comes to that is organic food is number one. Okay, and that is the top of the list. And then from there, I do prefer that it's local. If you can get it at your farmer's market, some of these things that I have here, I did get at my local farmer's market. But the quality of the food that you eat is essential to nourish your body the right way. So if you can't splurge on the best quality of foods for everything, then you need to start to prioritize some of those things. So what is best for you? I always say that if you are eating animal product, that that should be at the top of the list, and then you go from there, okay? So remember, 
Quality is everything. I view your shopping and your, your, the food that you eat as health insurance. And so if you spend the right money on the good quality food, then you are paying into your health and your fertility. And I think that investment will come back to you tenfold. So work on the quality first and foremost. The next thing I wanna highlight as we are talking about quality is the quality of the water that you're consuming. So first and foremost, most of you don't drink enough water and this little cup's not gonna do it, but you wanna be drinking about half your body weight in ounces. You wanna stay hydrated and you wanna make sure that the water that you're consuming is good quality. So what you can't see over there is that the water that I have is filtered because you wanna get rid of all those chemicals, all those byproducts, even all the pharmaceuticals and toxins that are in the water. You wanna make sure you get rid of all of those things. So that's why this is very important. But you also wanna make sure that your water is mineralized so that you can hydrate your cells appropriately when you're drinking it. So that's why water is so important. The other piece that I do wanna highlight when we're talking about water is get away from those one-use plastic bottles and buying bottled water. Most of us don't need to buy bottled water from plastic bottles unless we're out and about. If you're home, you shouldn't be using that. You should be using a glass cup from and using a filter at home. And that's really what you should be focusing on when you are consuming water. So I know those two points, those first two points are simple, right? Water and the quality of food, but so many of you don't do that. So that's why I'm highlighting them. Now let's get into carbs. So this is a common question that comes up. Should I be eating carbs? Should I be on a low carb diet? What should I do with carbs? What kind of carbs should I eat? What is a carb? Well. First and foremost, I wanna say that we should be eating carbs. We all still need them. They are very important for us. And I want that to be in moderate amounts. Now, carbohydrates really provide the body with glucose, which is converted into energy and used to support bodily functions and physical activity. That's why you need it. This gives you energy. And that's why you can't go into a no carb diet. Now, maybe for a short period of time, you might wanna be on a keto diet, that's okay. But in general, that is not a long-term solution or something that is sustainable, okay? Now, what kinds of carbohydrates are there? When we think of carbs, we think of bread and pasta. But you can also find carbs in dairy products, in fruit, in vegetables, right? In our fruits right here, in our veggies right here, in grains, in nuts, in legumes. There's lots of other places that you can find your carbs as well. But you know the other place that is full of carbs and not the carbs you want? Sugar, sweets, all those processed treats and snacks that we eat. That's right. And that's not what we want. Those are called simple carbs, right? We wanna avoid those things. So those simple carbs, to be clear for all of you, are raw sugar, brown sugar, corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup, glucose, fructose, sucrose, fruit juice concentrate. Those are all simple carbs. And we use sodas, right? Those are all things that fill us up and taste good, but they're not good for us and they're not good carbs, which is why we wanna get away from those things. We wanna fill our body with more complex carbohydrates. That's right, those are much, much better for us. And those are the things that we actually should be eating. They are actually beneficial in the sense that they're anti-inflammatory and have also been shown to regulate blood sugar. What are those things? Well, I already mentioned them, but I'm gonna highlight them again, just to be clear. Those are grains. Those are fiber-filled foods, right? Fiber, that's why you need the fiber from all of these things. That's why these leafy greens right here have this fiber. That's why you want it. That's why you want this broccoli, okay? Because it has the fiber and the carbohydrates. Those things are good for us. Legumes, which are beans and seeds, fiber-rich veggies, that is what we want. So again, coming back to this piece about keto, because I know everyone has this question, is yes, keto is okay if we need to lose weight for a short period of time, but it's not something that we should be using for a long period of time and sustaining that sort of diet. We need the carbohydrates to help us as well, and we need to eat a balanced meal that provides all of those things, and carbohydrates is one of them. One of my favorite things to talk about when we're talking about diet is fat because 
We're scared of fat in the United States. In the Western world, we have been accustomed to understand that fat is bad for us, when in reality, it's not. It's so important and essential for fertility. Dietary fats are essential to give your body energy and to support cell function. And they also help protect your organs and help you keep your body warm. They're so important for everything having to do with having good energy and fat helps your body absorb certain nutrients and they also help you feel fuller, longer, have a balanced blood sugar and help you regulate your hormones. And fat also helps you make certain steroid hormones like estrogen and testosterone. And we need these things for fertility. So it's so important that we consume a real and balanced amount of fat. And most of you need much more than you're actually incorporating into your diet. So it's really important that we spend a little bit of time on this topic, okay? So some good balanced fats are, nuts have good balanced fats, seeds, cold water fish, right? Salmon is awesome and you can see it's wild, wild salmon. Also meats are really important for fat or can be. So good grass-fed meat and uh, wild meats are really healthy and essential fats. Olives, I don't have my avocados here because we eat so much of them, we're out, but avocado is really good. Eggs, eggs are essential as well for balanced diets and actually not just these chicken eggs, but also, we have quail eggs right now in my house as well because we want to try something new and chicken eggs were becoming expensive. So we switched to some quail eggs which have been a lot of fun in our household, something different and something new. So fats are important. Some other fats that I wanna talk about and I'll highlight them in just a moment as well is ghee, okay, clarified butter, and fish oils, omegas, right? And omegas are called essential fatty acids for a reason because we need them. They're essential for our body. So all of these fats are important and I do think they should actually make up more on your plate and actually take up about anywhere between 30 to 50% of your plate in some capacity should be fats. We need that, especially women. Women need more fat than men to help balance and regulate those hormones. Another thing that I wanna highlight as we're talking about fats is which ones are good for us to cook with and which ones shouldn't we cook with. Now there's a lot of confusion here, okay? So the fats that are okay to cook with at high heat are gonna be your avocado oil, okay? I prefer it in glass bottle. We couldn't get it this time in glass bottle, so this is plastic, but I do prefer it in glass bottle. Butter, regular butter. Ghee is also very good. Bacon fat is really good. These are good and okay to cook at high temperatures when you have to saute, okay? But other fats are good to consume in general and not used at high temperatures, like olive oil. Olive oil is great as well. We use this as part of our salad dressing, but we also use it to top a lot of things. MCT oil is also good in that regard, and you would never cook with fish oils, just to be clear, but those are good to just consume straight. Um, I do prefer the, the liquid one to the capsules because you get a bigger bang for your buck, but either way. And I wanna make sure you're clear on that because most of you can um, mix that up and you are cooking with processed fats and oils and you're also cooking with olive oil and you don't really wanna cook olive oil at high heat, okay? So you wanna make sure you're using the right fat for the right cooking ingredient or the right way to cook. Now moving on to protein. Look, there's a lot of confusing information. Should we be eating animal meat? Should we be eating fish or not? What's okay for us? Should we be vegan? Everyone has a different take. I do think that our diets should be high in vegetables, high in plants, okay? And when we're talking about carbs on our plate and talking about plants and veggies, I do think if you can have a much bigger part of your plate as long as your carbs are coming from veggies as part of that, okay? I still think that we need animal protein, but it doesn't have to take up the whole plate, right? We're used to having our animal protein take up most of the plate and then these little portions here, it should be the reverse. And so I want you to think about still getting your, your protein from animals, that's my preference. If you are a vegan or a vegetarian, that's also okay. But then we need to be more conscious of how we're getting our, our protein. I am not a fan of the plant 
meats, those processed meats that look like meat, but they're plant-based. I prefer that you just get your protein in other ways from like legumes and seeds and maybe even a little bit of soy, but hopefully that would be fermented soy. So there's a lots of different other ways to, to make that happen, but I just wanna be clear about that. I still think that if you have small amounts um, at every meal of animal protein, that's okay. Right here, when we're talking about fish, I do love salmon, but I wanna make sure that you're all getting your fish to be wild, okay? That your, your fish should absolutely be wild. I love wild game as well, so um, meats. If not, they should be at least grass-fed. Your chicken should be pasture-raised and they should all be organic if you can make that happen. Why is that? Because that assures that you are eating protein that has not been contaminated by added chemicals and hormones and antibiotics. We want to leave that away right? We don't need any more of that. We get enough of that on a regular basis. So we want to make sure that we steer clear of that. Also, if we're eating the right quality of meats, that will not only have um, or add to our protein intake, it will also add to our fat intake as well. So that's why that's really important. I want to mention coming back like eggs are protein and fat and have a lot of key nutrients. I love consuming eggs. Um, I mentioned that before, but I'm going to come back to that here because it's part of the protein conversation. So just making sure that we have a balanced diet and, and that it has a good amount of protein. As I'm rounding out this conversation of protein, before I come back to vegetables, I do want to say that I love organ meats. Actually, I should be clear, I don't always love consuming organ meats, but I do love the benefit of organ meats. So if you are a fan of them and you're okay cooking them, then I do recommend consuming them that way. You really just need a small amount, maybe once or twice a week. If not, then um, you can uh, get the organ meat capsules. And one of the companies that I love for that, we're gonna list in the description below, it's Paleo Valley. And they also, as as we're going to segue into greens, they also make a wonderful dehydrated uh, organic green powder without any uh, grasses in it, which I also love. Again, those links are in the description below for all of you. So let's talk more about greens. We need to eat more veggies in general. Every time I look at someone's diet, they are not eating enough vegetables. So you can't have enough. You need to increase it. But I do recommend doing that slowly so it doesn't upset your tummy. Okay, having a heavy plant focused diet is great as long as it also has those other items that we want to consume as well. We want to make sure that we are eating enough vegetables at every meal. It provides fiber, which is also really important. We talked about that. It's really good for us on the carb side of things. It's good for some of those micronutrients that we are lacking, and it really makes us nice and full and helps us sustain our energy moving forward. You all do not eat enough vegetables. I know it because I see it. So let's increase that quite a bit. I do wanna highlight a couple other things. I already talked about water. I wanna talk about bone broth. Bone broth is one of my favorite things to consume. You can get it in a box like this. Actually, this is the only one that I really like to recommend in a box. You can also make it. It's wonderful, has tons of nutrients, tons of great protein. It's a wonderful thing to have, especially in the winter time. Just make a nice cup of it if you wanna add it as, a, um, as you're sauteing things and add it to a saute, cook with it in other ways, just sip on it, make a soup, whatever it is, I want you to incorporate uh, bone broth as well. And you can have tea. Some green tea is my favorite. I love green tea, okay? But we just want to have like a cup a day and balance that out, all right? And while we're talking about drinks, minimize your caffeine and make sure that your coffee is organic for all the same reasons I've always mentioned, which is all the chemicals and toxins that is that we are exposed to and that is in our food. Two other items that I wanna to touch on, one of them I kind of highlighted already, which is soy. So I want you all to eat some soy in small amounts or really moderate amounts. My preference is that they are fermented, so miso, natto, tempeh, those are much better for us in so many ways, especially because of the fermentation part of it, and sparingly in its full form, okay? And then dairy, as long as dairy is in the full fat form, you can have small, moderate amount of it, okay? I don't want you to go crazy with it. Some good, healthy cheese here and there, but you don't have, to, I know it tastes good, but cheese doesn't have to be in everything, so please be careful of that as well. Now, I wanna hear from all of you. What did you learn from this video? 
What was something new that you learned from this video? I know there is, so comment below and let me know. Additionally, I want to hear your questions. So post your questions below about your fertility and I'll do my best to answer them, all right? Hopefully this video on nutrition and food and diet was helpful for you. I will have more of these in the future, but again, I've got a free training coming up shortly that I would love to see you at. It's gonna be packed full of wonderful information. Use the link in the description below to register for it. Now, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you're not already a subscriber to my YouTube channel, you need to be, so hit that bell to subscribe and get notified when I put out another video for all of you. And until the next video, stay fertile.